and welcome to Southview Grace Brother and Church's uh, instructional video on communion. It's our goal in putting this together to give you a tool, a tool that has some basic biblical instruction on why and how to do a communion service in your home, and also to give you some ideas uh, on how uh, to make it more special and more of a time that we can teach and learn and grow closer together and ultimately go, uh, grow closer to Christ. So um, we hope that uh, dads or, um, or husbands that want to lead the service themselves will watch the video and will be able to lead this on their own. And so if you want the notes that I have here in front of me, uh, to do that, all you have to do is contact the church or contact me, and I'll be happy to email you a copy of these. But we also want it to be a video that if you decide to watch it as a family, as the time of instruction, that you can do that as well. Just you're going to have to be ready to pause uh, and play as you read the different scriptures uh, together. Um, but it's going to be what, what you make it, this, uh, this communion time. It's, if, if you want uh, the family to dress up, um, to make uh, the time more special, then do that. If you want it to be more casual, then do that. But it's your time uh, to, to celebrate this vital and integral part that we as followers of Jesus Christ um, do, especially uh, around the, Eastern, uh, the Easter season. Um, we ask that as you uh, partake in this communion service in your homes that you do two things. First, we ask that you take just a couple pictures that you'd be willing to share with your church family, that we can see um, uh, the other uh, people that we go to church with, our brothers and sisters in Christ, um, and know that they uh, took this uh, serious and, partake, and partook in it as well. And secondly, um, we have a prayer wall now on our web page. And so uh, during our times of testimony, uh, in this communion service, we're asking that you write down some of the uh, praise notes and, and prayer requests and that you will share those on the prayer wall on our church webpage. And so that's kind of the goal that kind of sets things up uh, as we uh, begin uh, to get into the teaching. I'd ask that you open your Bibles to the 22nd chapter of the book of Luke and we will be reading that together and uh, as you're doing that, I'll open in a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you and we are in absolute awe of the sacrifice that you would make for us. God, I want to praise you for this unique opportunity that we have to have a communion service together in our homes as families. God, I pray that uh, each person that is uh, partaking uh, in this service will grow uh, in their knowledge and understanding of the truth that comes uh, only from your word and that that truth will draw them closer to you uh, and also to their brothers and sisters in Christ. That this will be a night that will unite our church um, around a common mission and the common purpose um, as we celebrate uh, in a sense what you did for us. Lord I pray um, that what is done through this video and uh, through these communion services will ultimately and only bring you glory and honor. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom 
of God comes. And then he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. Okay, after reading Luke 22, you now have read uh, the picture or the moment that we, in a sense, are recreating through a communion service. And so clearly, uh, this is a time that is uh, meant to be serious. It's not a time that we're goofing around and, and, and making light of it. This is leading up to Christ's death on the cross, and he used it as a very intimate time of teaching, and that's what we want to do uh, through this as well. And so one of the things that um, I think is very, very important uh, to the, the communion service that I think often gets left out is found in the um, 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. And so I'll ask that you will turn there and in a moment pause the video and read that together. But it begins uh, um, in verse 27. And because this is such a serious time and because we're following a commandment that, that God gave us, he tells us, look, take this time and examine yourself. Search yourself. Uh, if you have sin in your life that you need to confess and deal with, now is the time to do this. Communion is for believers, followers of Christ, and it is for those who uh, have confessed their sins and are right, have a right relationship between uh, them and God. And not only that, but I would emphasize that there are right relationships between you and your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so if there is a relationship that uh, you have with a fellow brother or sister that's uh, been damaged, and this is a great opportunity to at least reach out to them and say, I want to begin the restoration process, or brother, will you forgive me, or sister, will you forgive me for what um, I did? But um, it's very, very important. And as you read uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 33, you'll see just how important it is. But take this um, opportunity uh, and, and read that passage of Scripture together, and then take some time and make sure that you do what the scripture says and examine yourself search your heart and mind and get things right then came the day of unleavened bread on which the passover lamb had to be sacrificed jesus sent peter and john saying go and make preparations for us to eat the passover where do you want us to prepare for it they asked he replied as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. So let's start with the foot washing part. The foot washing, the main text of scripture is John chapter 13. As a family, you want to read verses 1 through 17 together. 
And you can focus on verses 14 and 15, where Jesus says, Hey, this, as I have done this, so ought to you do it. And that's why uh, we do it. We're obeying uh, the command of, of Christ. Um, and so John chapter 13 is the main text of Scripture. The time, the second T, is the present. Uh, the foot washing part focuses on the present. And that far away, the teaching, the teaching that we focus on here, the term is sanctification. And so John 13, the present, and sanctification. Sanctification is our daily walk with Christ. As Christ molds us and makes us into the people that he wants us to be, his followers, um, we, as we confess our sins uh, to him, this is what this is signify, uh, uh, symbolizing. And, and as you can see, in the foot washing that Jesus did, he came to Peter, and Peter said, you're not going to just wash my feet, but my hands and my head also. And Jesus said, no, look. And it's a kind of a teaching that, you know, once you've been saved, you've been saved. When, you know, Christ forgave your sins, his pure and precious blood, the past, present, and future. But it's the daily cleansing. And that culture, when they would go and, and, and uh, bathe, they, they would walk back, and of course on the dusty streets uh, with their wet feet, um, they would need washed. And so it was the lowliest servant's job to wash the feet of those who entered into the home. And so you can understand why the apostles at that time were surprised when Jesus got up and girded himself with a towel and began to wash their feet. He was doing it to teach them about their need for daily cleansing, daily repentance. It's more than just an act of humility. Some people teach this, that this was Christ teaching on humility. Obviously, um, it's very uh, humbling to do this, but it's to teach us about the sanctification. We, we wash feet um, in obedience to Jesus' command. The, the action symbolizes uh, this, the opportunity, the current opportunity that we have as children of, of, of God to ask that forgiveness and have a clear and open, restored uh, fellowship um, and relationship uh, with him. So the fourth T of foot washing is the technique. In other words, how do you do this? Well, as a dad, this is your opportunity to lead by example. Um, you can choose if you want to, especially if you have younger children, to simply you do as Christ did and wash each of the feet um, of your family members. Or uh, you can pair up and have family members wash one another's feet. The simplest way of doing this is if you have some wet wipes, just use wet wipes. If you want to get a bucket or a basin to put water in and a towel, that's what we do when we gather together as a church more often. Um, you're welcome to do that. But you simply take the other person's foot, place it uh, into the bucket or, or with the wet wipe, wash it, um, take it out, dry it, and uh, go on to the next foot. Um, once you've washed both feet, um, I would encourage you to stand up, uh, tell your family member how much you love them, what they mean to you, and how much of an honor it was for you to wash their feet. Um, after you have finished the foot washing, um, I'm going to ask that each, uh, after each of the three parts, that you have a time of testimony. And that's the fifth uh, T that we're going to go over under each of the parts. And what I would like the testimonies of each element to focus on goes back to the time that they teach. So um, during this time of testimony, I would encourage one member or multiple members of the family to share a testimony based upon the present. Answer a question like this. What is God teaching you right now? What is God doing in your life in the present uh, to mold you and make you into the person that he wants you to be? We in the present right now have a very unique situation with this COVID-19 and if God's not teaching you or, or working on you through this time then that's an issue we need to deal with but as you share with one another what is God teaching you how have you seen him work uh, even through this uh, COVID thing um, share with one another um, at this time and let's move on to the second part of the threefold communion and that is the love feast uh, at this time um, I'd ask that you turn in your Bibles to 1st Corinthians chapter 11 this is the main text uh, to this part um, you will be uh, reading verses 17 through 22 
and then 29 through 34. So that's 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 22, and 29 to 34. I also would like you to read Revelation chapter 19, verses 5 through 9. Revelation 19, 5 through 9. And as you're reading that, I want you to think about the time element of this part, and that is the future. So as you read this text, think about the future as we are glorified. That's the term, glorification. That's the teaching that uh, this part um, symbolizes. This meal is um, done in anticipation of what we call the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's a feast that we will enjoy in Christ's kingdom. Uh, the Lord's uh, Supper, it's not just another meal. It's a unique opportunity for us to serve uh, and learn and grow closer with one another as we look to the future. So read those uh, texts of Scripture together right now, and then we'll talk about the technique in a moment. The technique, like what meal should we have? Well, I don't think that uh, it's that big of a deal to have a specific type of meal. The scripture clearly doesn't teach that. In fact, Pastor Lair used to teach that if you would put a comparison meal out to what they were eating, it would be pizza. So, again, this is what you make it. If you want to make this a, a, a more laid back and casual time, you can serve something simple, even peanut butter and jelly. Um, if you want to make it a more uh, serene, uh, to, you know, intimate setting, then by all means, uh, have a candlelight dinner um, together as a family where you're able to really focus uh, on, on the teaching. Um, but uh, uh, what you don't want to do is gorge yourself. Don't go to a buffet because the scriptures teach that's really not the purpose of this meal. The purpose of this meal is to, uh, again, look forward uh, to the time that we will have as the bride of Christ in the marriage supper of, of the Lamb. The testimony that I'd like you to talk about over the meal is simply this. As a believer, the future for us is bright. The hope that we have in Christ, uh, the joy that we have in Christ, uh, can be there even in tough times because we know that in the end, ultimately, we win. And so have a little fun with this testimony time. Talk about the future. Talk about some things that you hope Christ does in your life uh, in the future. Uh, maybe some ways that you would like to serve him. If Dads, ask your kids if you could go on a mission trip to any part of the world. Why would you go there? What would you do? Um, talk about the future it, when you get to heaven. What Bible character do you want to meet? Um, uh, talk about um, uh, other saints that have passed on before us. Um, that you admired or looked up to or ones that taught uh, you or ones that invested in you and, and how that you want to thank them someday when you're uh, together in heaven. Maybe the person that led you to the Lord. Maybe they've passed on. and uh, Those are important stories that um, our children need to hear from us. How we came to Christ and, and how we're looking forward uh, uh, to seeing those uh, saints who have gone on. Um, and that we will see them at the marriage uh, supper of the Lamb. So in your testimony time, look to the future uh, and, and be prepared to write those down and share those with your church family. So let's move on now to the third and final element of the communion service, and that is the bread and the cup, or what we call the Eucharist. The text of this is Luke 22, 15 to 20, so you uh, heard that in the beginning, but it wouldn't hurt you to go back and reread it. And also, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, and chapter 11, 23 through 30. Um, that's the main text of it. And the time that I want you to think about is the past. This one, this part of the, uh, of the communion service looks back to the past. And the teaching of it is justification. So let's do a, a quick review. We had the foot washing, which the term was sanctification, as it dealt with the present. Then you went to the love feast, the teaching was the future, and glorification as we look forward. And the uh, bread and the cup is the term of justification, where we um, have been declared legally uh, free from the, pain, from, the, from the punishment of our sin um, at the moment of salvation. That was made possible because of the sacrifice that Christ did on the cross through his de uh, death and resurrection. And so... 
It's the past and justification. The bread symbolizes Christ's broken body, and that broke the old covenant, the law. Um, the cup obviously symbolizes the blood of Christ, which in one act purchased for us uh, the new and the better covenant of salvation by grace through faith. Um, and so uh, it, it's a legitimately a living symbol. It, it's a way for us to say thank you um, as we do this in remembrance, is what Christ tells us, do this in remembrance of what Christ did for us on the cross. And so um, it's a living form of gratitude. As we look now at the fourth T uh, to this element, that of technique, how, how do you do this? How do you take the bread and the cup? Um, not trying to oversimplify it, but just to let you know that it, any bread will do. Um, you can use uh, a cracker, you can use bread, it doesn't have, you don't have to go buy unleavened bread, you can use any other bread. Um, and then simply just, uh, some people leave it as a whole and break off a little piece. Uh, some people uh, just, uh, if they use a cracker, just have two people break it, uh, uh, whatever. But whatever is simple and works and symbolizes this properly, that's, uh, that's what you use. Um, and, uh, you know, when you do that together as a family, uh, read out loud together, uh, Luke 22, 19, or 1 Corinthians 11, 24. Read that, break the bread, and then take it. Same thing for the cup. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that it has to be wine or grape juice, although the color of the drink obviously helps uh, symbolize uh, the blood of Christ. Um, so you simply pour uh, the drink. Uh, you, you don't need a lot, just a little bit. Um, read the words of Luke 22, 20 or 1 Corinthians 20, uh, 11, 25. Read those together as a family and take uh, the bread and the cup. Um, and then finally, uh, after you do so, uh, again, the fifth T, the testimony time, I would ask that you read um, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, And it says, whenever you do this, you, uh, whenever you take the bread and the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so... Um, this testimony time kind of has two parts to it. And first, I'd like you to really understand how and why uh, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes by taking uh, the bread and the cup. Talk about that as a family. And then finally, um, I want to reemphasize, it's so important for um, our families to know our stories. Um, and so look back, what has Christ done for you in the past? Maybe share a time and when, and when the hand of God was was very evident uh, in your life and in your walk with Christ. Uh, or maybe share the moment of when you came to Christ, when you were justified, um, and uh, share that with uh, your family. So um, sometimes our stories that we have really, uh, really get to and teach um, our children um, and help them understand. So in conclusion, um, I would ask that each uh, of these parts of scripture or of, of uh, the communion service that you pray uh, with as well uh, as a family over each part and that at the end that you close again in a time of prayer um, and I hope and pray that by understanding these three parts and the five T's to each part that you have a better understanding um, of, of the communion service because it is so vital and integral uh, to what uh, we do and who we are in Christ and understanding uh, what he did for us on the cross. So uh, again, I'll be praying for you um, as you uh, take this communion and I hope that you're praying uh, for your families, uh, your fellow families at Southview as well.